Hello, my name is Audrey Gordon, and we are going over the second tutorial template called Common Math Expressions. Remember that tutorial templates are a new uh, component that we're adding for you to the template gallery so that you can focus on the different features of Power Automate that you can reuse inside your own uh, flows. So in this case, each of these tutorial templates are acting as a learning experience so that you can see examples of how these core components are used in a typical flow. You will copy and paste these or you will practice these patterns in your own flows as needed. So today's template is common math expressions. And this is something that we've gotten some really serious feedback on that when it comes to the expressions and using the advanced expressions, people will often have uh, some questions. We have documented our expressions um, and they are found as part of the Azure Logic Apps uh, documentation and that is because they are Logic Apps expressions. However, some of you would like to see samples that extend beyond uh, this documentation, which I think is very thorough. So basically every advanced expression that you can work with is documented here uh, on this page. And you'll see inside of Power Automate, you'll see links to learn more about expressions. If you click on that link, it'll bring you here. I've also put the link to this page in the description of the Common Math uh, Operations uh, template. All right, but just keep this page handy. It's a good one to get to know and to understand because it does help to define all of the advanced expressions possible in Power Automate. All right, so I'm going to return to the template gallery and we're going to put in our word tutorials as a search filter and hit enter. And you can see the three that are released now. Check out the other videos on the SharePoint list and the uh, HTML email and we're going to focus here on common math expressions. In this case, you're getting the description via this video, but uh, most, of, most of the cases you want to read the description first so that you know what the dependencies are for the particular flow. In this case, there are no dependencies. There are no connections needed. Um, and that's, that's probably why we brought you straight into the designer. You didn't have to validate what connection you were using. It, it, I think it still would have been nice for you to read the description. So I'm just going to hit save here. And then I'm just going to hit this blue arrow so that we can go back and look at the description together. And you can see here, learn how to use logic apps expressions to perform typical mathematical operations on a button click. And so in this case, it's not really intended to be a pattern. There's no reason why we would click a button to run a whole bunch of math operations. The point here is to help you understand how the math operations work inside of Power Automate. That way you can reuse these patterns elsewhere. So to help this uh, flow get started, there are three variables here that are just used inside of the flow to give you some examples. So the first one is a number variable. Notice that its type is float. The second variable is an array or a table of information. Sometimes we need to put numbers into a table. And then there's such a thing as a range variable. And the range, which is a string in this case, is creating a, a range of values. And so we'll see that in the, so we've got three different types of variables used here, which is also kind of a bonus for learning how to use variables. All right, number, table array, and range, okay? So again, with all the tutorial templates, we try to use scopes to group uh, the topics so that you can learn them one at a time, skip over some, do others. And uh, if there is any dependencies coming from other actions, we will make sure that we put them in the order that is, is uh, going to allow for you to configure run after easily. Okay, so in this case, each of these basically stand on their own, but let's look at them together. Let's start with addition. Addition returns the results from adding two numbers. And this is another thing you'll notice 
in these um, different examples that we put into the tutorial templates, you will see comments sometime on the actions. And the comments are important so that you know, okay, here's any heads up and so forth. None of these had comments, but this is the first one with a comment. So always keep your eyes open for comments that we might add because they're helpful in uh, in st extending your capability to reuse this in a real life scenario. All right, so first I have a variable here and basically it's a static add. What do we mean by static? We mean the numbers are manually typed in the function. So over here in the expression editor, you can see that I'm adding one and to 1.5. All right, so that we're just performing a simple addition operation. This is the original design editor. I just want to show you what this would look like in the new or experimental editor. We're going to bounce over to this area. And if I were to zoom in here with the, with the newer editor, we're actually starting our, we'll do it manually. We're starting our expressions using the FX click, and then we're typing in there our expression. In both cases, we get syntax help, all right? So in both cases, we basically, I'm typing the same thing. Remember that I'm adding numbers, so there would never be any quotation marks in something like this, because you can't add strings, so you would make sure you just have numbers here, and this is static. Let's take a look at some tips I want to give you on syntax real quick in the deck and we'll come back. All right, we're gonna go to this slide and just look at the syntax tips. So the one in the top left is coming from our current design editor, the one that's in production. The one on the bottom right is coming from the new designer that is in experimental mode. Just so that you can see, in both cases, you do get syntax help. So basically, as soon as you get behind that first parentheses, it pops this up so that you can see what's the syntax of this particular expression. In this case, we need two parameters, um, and they are just two numbers. Right, um, and so uh, this only works when you're adding two numbers. So that that's a limitation to this formula. Keep that in mind. So you might want to do multiple adds if you need to add a bunch of things together, or you might want to find a mechanism for iterating and getting a sum that could also occur. Um, but what you see in front of the colon is just kind of like the name. Of that of that of that piece of that uh, function so uh, sum add one is just the name we're given to the first number sum add new two is the, the name we're giving to the second number so don't let those um, confuse you you can completely ignore anything in front of these colons and just remember that we need a number comma another number all right and so in every case, you'll get these. In the new editor, you also have a link here to the right that's called list of functions, and that will take you to that page I was just showing you that documents all the functions um, that are available in Logic Apps, all right? But every function, and not just in Power Automate, but in every application, every function has parameters. And so you have to make sure that you input the right ones. In this case, we need two numbers. And anything other than two numbers will result in an error. Okay, so let's go back. And uh, I'm going to go back to the current designer. All right, and we have add there. Okay, then we actually take the output of that static add. So we can click here and anytime we're using dynamic content, we can use dynamic content from anything that's above it. So above this action, we had calculated one plus 1.5. And so we can take that output 
and set it to a variable. So we put that number in this number variable so that we could use it later. All right, now I'm gonna close that one. And here's our second example. The difference between this example and the first one is that there's some dynamic content used in this one. So basically we are taking that variable var number and using it in our addition formula so that we're adding whatever is in the variable for the number and we're adding a hundred to that. All right. And just to point out what this feels like, I'm going to delete this and I'm in the old expression editor. I'm going to type add and then I need to go and look for that variable and it's behind here in dynamic content. So I kind of click behind there and I click var number and that gives me the variable. Then I can hit a comma and this is telling me now you need to enter this number. So it like highlights the next thing needed and that's gonna be 100. And that's how I set that. Now, a little bit advantages on the new system. Let's just look at this here. I'm gonna add a variable here where the new designer is. And I'm just going to put a static number in here. I'm gonna call this var number and I'm going to make it a float. And I'm gonna set it to 1.5. So let's set it to 21.5. Okay, so now we've got a number in our variable, hand typed, so that now I can delete this, I can hit my FX button, and now what you'll see here is I can type add, open my print. Now notice that here, I just wanna um, get behind the other print so I can get rid of the syntax for a second. Notice that I've got a pointer that's pointing to where this is gonna go. So if this was a whole sentence, the number would go exactly where this is pointing. All right, so I'm gonna go back in there and right down here on the bottom, I don't have to worry about getting behind anything. I can click on the uh, variable that I wanna use here and then comma 100, all right? Now, this doesn't matter where I click. I don't have to worry about remembering to hit the update button or anything. It doesn't matter where I click, it will keep it. I do wanna show you that it will keep it even if there's an error. So remember, you don't wanna put quotes in number syntax because you can't add a string to a number. So by putting quotes, I just made that a string. And that may, so that's gonna become an error at runtime. It won't become an error here. But let's say I forget to put a second uh, parameter in there because this needs two, remember? So I forgot to put a second one in there. I click away. Let's see. Let's just take out this paren. I'm trying to create a, an, an error I can pick up right now. Okay, so the missing paren did get picked up. So not everything will be picked up in this uh, checking of this formula. It will get picked up during runtime though. And we're trying to extend how much stuff is picked up you know, in the editor itself so that you don't waste time having to run, all right? But it didn't delete it. It just put it there and marked it with an error. So we can come back in here and correct that error, which is the missing paren uh, and the number, and now everything is good. So keep that in mind. And the, with the new designer, you have some level of checking. Uh, with the old designer, you basically may not even be able to save. Um, and so I'll show you what that looks like. If we were to do the same thing in the old editor and hit update, it won't even let us add it there, right? And so you get this error up here that you must respond to before you can continue, and then you can correct it. So um, that had been a blocker, and some of you had said that was a blocker, so we kind of removed that with the new designer, and that's where we're heading for the next release. All right, so now we've added the dynamic content to 100, and then we're actually creating a record for our table array. And a record needs a key and a value. All right, so in this record, we're gonna have, this is the tutorial for addition. It's example one. So, and then it gives you the answers for each one. Example one's gonna have the output from the static add action. And example two is gonna have the output from the example two dynamic add. 
And so this will enable you to validate your assumptions on what you think will happen. And so I'm just going to run this entire flow right here so that you can see how it runs. All right, so now it is saved. Then I'm going to, and I can either run it from its de details page by clicking run, or I can use test, but I'm going to go ahead and run this flow. And notice that it's running. If I click on this here, you can actually see that it has run. And now it's really um, important to learn to read your runs when it comes to these tutorial templates because you will learn a lot from reading the runs. What do I mean by reading the runs? Actually open up these scope areas that have succeeded and look at what the result was. So in this case, when we added one plus 1.5, we got 2.5. You can see easily what was used. So reading the, the run means being able to look and see what happened after it ran. What was the answer? Here's the record that was created. Now, we have set this up so very similar actions occur with division, um, max, mod, ran, range, and review. In some cases, they are opposites we didn't bother to do. For instance, addition would be the same thing with subtraction. You, you'd perform it the same way. The only difference would you be you'd use the sub function, which is for subtraction. Division works just like multiplication. So you would use the MUL instead of div. Max is the opposite of min. So in some cases we didn't do each and every one, but you can tell that the opposites are possible. And then at the very end of this, what we've actually done is we've output a uh, HTML table to give you each tutorial scope, its examples for example one, it's example for example two results so that you can go and confirm your assumptions on what happened in all these cases. So this is a great template to sit down with for about 20 minutes. Check out each of the scopes and learn how we handle common math uh, operations. So again, I hope this is helpful to you. If you have feedback, please put it on the community in the ideas form and tag it tutorial templates, and then we can incorporate your feedback. If you have ideas for new tutorial templates, please add that to the community ideas format as well and tag it with a label of tutorial templates. Thank you for participating in this video and uh, enjoy your Power Platform experience.